All right, let's get this schmo on the road, shall we? I don't know if you remember that Laura dog tracker project I've been working on. Yeah, I kind of thought that was dead in the water too, but it turns out that I've been working on it the whole damn time. Who knew? So I thought today might be an excellent day to get reacquainted with that project and see how things are going. Now this whole YouTube thing is awesome, but I have found that it is much, much easier not to make a video than it is to make a video. So that I guess is part of my problem and why it takes so long to get these damn things put out. I promise I'll try and do better in the future because they are kind of a hoot to make. The point of this project was to set one of my neighbors up with a dog tracking system that did not involve buying his dog a cell phone. Cause first of all, that's stupid. And second, it's expensive. And third, if you call, your dog's not gonna answer anyway. He's embarrassed by you. So what we ended up using was the RFM95 module that is a kind of a long range transceiver. And uh, it uh, theoretically has a range of about 700 kilometers yes that is insane and you'll never get that with this thing because that's under some crazy ideal conditions what you will get from this is maybe a kilometer and a half possibly two on a really good day so we married this little guy to an arduino pro mini and a gps module and then with a little software hocus pocus we were able to see where the tracker was on a Google map. And that is the Reader's Digest version of this project. This uh, Pro Mini board has been a great little companion for the RFM95, but now there is a new kid in town and that's this, the Ciduino Zhao, and it's a cranky little board. It runs at 48 megahertz, is way overkill for what we need here, but uh, it's, um, as you can see, quite a bit smaller than the Pro Mini which is really quite nice. And it's got a USB interface, which makes it a little bit easier for programming. And the kind folks at DIYCon.nl who brought us the uh, Pro Mini slash RFM95 board have made a Zhao RFM95 board. And you can tell right away, you know, it's a bit smaller. And another advantage is this thing, you can surface mount to this board. So no pins necessary, which will lower the profile of the whole schema, right? And what you can end up with is something that looks like this. So this is probably my smallest tracker yet. And uh, as you can see in comparison to the old one, it's reasonably smaller, although this doesn't have a case, mind you, so there's a little bit of a, an illusion here, but uh, it's still significantly smaller than the original version. So anyway, I like these quite a bit. There are some cautionary tales here, though. First one is, and I'm just gonna tell you these because I don't, I'm probably not gonna go through making one of these or anything, but um, Two things you gotta be aware of. One, you cannot power this Zhao through the 3.3 volt like you can with the Arduino Pro Mini. You have to go through the five volt. If you power it through the 3.3 volt, you will blow the voltage regulator. So that's kind of a sucky thing, but uh, the voltage regulator that's in here will work down to I think 3.7 volts before it kicks out. And um, yeah, you know, you lose a little bit of battery life. Mm, so that's kind of a downside. But anyway, bottom line is don't use the 3.3 volt, use the 5 volt in. And the other thing is if this thing refuses to program for some reason and you think it's maybe hooped, it's probably not. Uh, your PC won't recognize this port. And what you can do is you can short those two little pads there and that will reset the board and you should it should show up back up on your computer and you can program it again. So don't panic if uh, this thing seems like it's uh, borked, because it may not be. Other than that, it's been a great little uh, microprocessor for this thing. And the other thing is I've got a much smaller battery in this. You can see there's a, a larger battery in this one. But this is 150 milliamp hours and what was this one? Oh, that one was only 200 anyway. 
but uh, a little bit of testing and I found that this 150 milliamp hour will run for two hours continuously transmitting location every 10 seconds so it's not too bad you could obviously extend that battery life by you know sleeping this thing for longer periods of time or you know there's there are tricks to get this to last longer but it's a pretty decent little solution and such a small little package uh, the other thing that would be nice to do is get rid of this uh, charging module shouldn't you be able to charge the battery externally I'm thinking about that so maybe I'll come up with something and that'll just squish that down ever so slightly more anyway we're getting to the point where maybe 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 you could stick this on a cat your cat's damn well not gonna like it you know how they get all crazy when there's something around their neck but uh, you know if you wanted to track your cat you might be able to do it with something like this so that's the new tracker module I'm pretty happy with it and uh, we'll see if we can't get this any smaller in the future all that juicy GPS data that the tracker is spitting out gets captured by the antenna on the roof up here and if you have a look you'll see there's a little box below it and I call that the gateway yeah I know it's not really gateway now but I still like to call it that because it really makes the IOT Nazis a little bit crazy we'll have a little peek inside one of those boxes in a second uh, the whole thing is powered by a solar panel which is on the roof here and there's a uh, fairly large battery in that little box up there keeps it going when the sun no longer shines and this makes the system basically autonomous I don't really need to screw with it much unless I want to change the software that's in that box the antenna at the very tippy top there is a monopole ground plane antenna and it works pretty damn good for what it cost me which is basically well not much now this whole system works pretty good if you can keep your dog within the range of this antenna which I said before is about a kilometer and a half or so if the dog gets outside of that well then you're kind of fucked because this thing will have no idea where it is so I figured there had to be some way of dealing with that fairly likely scenario so I put on my thinking cap that's the uh, pointy cone shaped one isn't it yeah, I'm pretty sure it is and I came up with this which I lovingly call a mobile gateway now you're probably thinking to yourself hey wait a minute dumbass that looks suspiciously like the thing on your roof and I guess you wouldn't be wrong if you've seen videos one and two you'll recognize most of the junk that's on the inside of here we've got the same RFM 95 LoRa module and this is an ESP32 microprocessor for this thing and the nice thing about it it's got built-in Wi-Fi which allows me to talk to this thing through my server and that's how we get the GPS data from here onto the Google map it's also got a little charging board here battery and the same monopole ground plane antenna as on the roof there are however two significant differences between this one and the one on the roof the first being that instead of using the built-in Wi-Fi on the ESP32 we're going to use the built-in Bluetooth and yes I know Bluetooth has an even shittier range than Wi-Fi but it is good enough to talk to one of these ubiquitous pieces of human misery the second difference is this one has a kick-ass magnet on the bottom which is perfect for slapping on your car and driving around looking like a goof you know I was assured that by the time I had a computer in my pocket I'd be boldly going where no man has gone before who knew that that just meant taking it to the toilet now you may be already getting what I'm throwing down here but I made visual aids so we're gonna use them so now your dog's gone and it's out of the range of your base station so what are you gonna do of course you get in your car and you drive around yelling your dog's name out of the window like a crazy person nobody really wants that instead you slap one of these mobile gateways on top of your vehicle and you start driving around so your dog's got the tracking collar on and it's puking out GPS information to the air doesn't care who's listening doesn't expect a response hopefully however your mobile gateway has picked up the signal it also will not do any processing it simply turns around and Bluetooth that information over to your cell phone your cell phone will actually take a look at that see if there's a good GPS coordinate in that information and if there is it plots it onto a map right away so immediately you know where your dog is but I thought hell why stop there why not just package that same data up as a JSON packet and post it to a web server the web server then just takes it and slaps it into a MySQL database and then what you can do is turn around and pull that database 
bring it into a dynamic Google map, and now the same tracker information is also available live on the internets. Hmm? Pretty slick, eh? And wouldn't you know, I actually never had an occasion to use it, <laughs> which is pretty fucking sad, but it works. So I think we're going to take it out for a pseudo test run just to just to prove to everybody that this thing actually does what I said it's going to do. <laughs> All right, I think we're ready to take this thing out in its maiden voyage. I, I don't have a dog, but I got the next best thing, and that's kids. And one of them has taken a tracker trail running. And I kind of have an idea of where he's going, but I don't know for sure, which is the whole point of this. So we're going to try and track him down with it. Uh, I'm also bringing an extra tracker for reasons that may become obvious later. And uh, the only other thing I'm going to need is my phone. And over here, we're going to be keeping track of what's going on on the internet. Remember, all that cell phone data should get uploaded to the server and then into the database and then onto this dynamic map here. So we're going to keep track of what's going on here just by screen recording it. So to make this little guy chooch, all we got to do is press the button. Three flashes of the green light should indicate that everything initialized properly and we're ready to go. And then every time it receives a, uh, a val- look, well, Anytime it receives any sort of LoRa signal, it'll give a little flash. So to connect the mobile tracker to the phone, we're just going to click on the little app I created, which is cleverly named Map. The little car icon indicates the location of the phone. And then up here is the little connection thing. We'll click on that and we'll click on Mobile Tracker. And if it goes green, we've got a solid Bluetooth connection between these two guys. And there's project number 433. Uh, got this thing for a song, a real song, and I can't even sing. Ran like shit when I got it. Now we're, we're getting there anyway. Taint perfect, as you can see. Uh, it spilled its guts here. Everything is a work in progress around here for some reason. All right, so I'm going to turn on my other tracker here. And uh, that will give us a trail for me as well. So everything's looking pretty good here. I am well out of the range of the gateway that's on the roof by this point. Along the way, I discover that the Bluetooth connection will just randomly disconnect, I assume just to piss me off. I'll have to figure out what's going on there. The app I wrote has the ability to track multiple trackers at the same time, and right now it is recentering the screen on the location of my tracker. I have no idea how it's gonna react when a second tracker comes on the screen. What happens is it doesn't center the map on either of them, which means I missed the boy's tracker showing up on the map. And that would be stupid error number two. However, it does illustrate that the thing damn well works. Now you can probably spot a problem here. Uh, I've got a thing on my roof here, but if the dog is out in the woods somewhere, then what are you gonna do? I guess you could carry the roof thing around with you, but... But nothing, dumbass. That would be stupid. What we really need is a little portable one that we can just carry around. So that's going to be put on the list. And that would make this error number three. Fortunately, we can just wait around for the lad to make his way back while I hang out in the parking lot looking like some creepy Inspector Gadget. Do 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 Well done. Seemed to work pretty good. We'll have to see, calculate how far it actually managed to track you at. Now it looks like the internet tracking is working fine. Oh, for fuck's sake, you've got to be kidding me. I guess I didn't press start on the recording. So we have no record of this other than what we've got on the screen here. Holy stupid. Uh, so what does that make this error number four? Good grief. Would have been nice to have a little animated thing going on here, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll make do with what we got. Uh, I am the blue trail here, and my kid is the red trail. You can see he left home, and we lost his signal right about there, and then reacquired it somewhere over here. And if I look back at the recording, it looks like the first time we saw that signal was somewhere here. And the distance between those two points, as the crow flies, is about 1.6 kilometers, which isn't too bad, I think. So I think once we work the kinks out of this thing, it will add a lot of usability to the whole system. And it'll increase the range of the thing to what? Like basically infinity, cause yeah, you can take that gateway anywhere with you. And if that smells like clickbait, ah, uh, you're probably not wrong. But as Obi-Wan said, it is true from a certain point of view. All those tricksy Jedi.
Anyway, since I've got my ass firmly planted in front of the computer here, why don't we have a look at some of the interesting software changes that I've made. This terminal window here monitors the communications between the rooftop gateway and the server. And it does that through a socket. In previous iterations of this software, all I could do was watch what was going on. But I decided I should probably add some interactivity to this. So now we can actually type into this window and send commands to the gateway. Now, because I'm old and I can't remember where I put my car keys or my cell phone or my wallet or what commands operate this software, I built in some help. So if we just press question mark here, it should give us a list. Now I'm gonna have to wait for the system to come back online. It sleeps like this because it's supposed to be preserving battery, which is insane on a day like today where it's blazingly hot and sunny, but it's only 15 seconds. So the command's already in there. We'll hit return. Anyway, it gives us a listing of the possible things we can talk to the gateway about. The first one being list settings. So let's just do that. It should show us all of the possible parameters that we can set from here, including things like bandwidth, spread factor, and coding rate which allows you to kind of test out these parameters without having to go up onto the roof, reprogram the device, and then put it back up there again. So yeah, kind of handy. All right, so since I don't really want this thing to be going online and offline all the time, let's uh, turn on coffee mode. And we're gonna do that for say uh, 30 minutes, which means it won't do that anymore. It's a uh, way of keeping this thing awake. <laughs> All of these commands were out of necessity. None of them were just because uh, I wanted something to do. Other things we can do is look at the condition of the battery. So we'll just type in battery and it shows us that we're basically are at full voltage. This command mode here is interesting. Uh, I found that often the when you're trying to type in a command to the gateway, the tracker will spit something out and then that gets onto the screen. So. Uh, it, this will, if we do this, it will ignore any GPS information that's coming from a tracker. Allows you to talk to the gateway without being interrupted, basically. Sleep is basically the opposite of coffee. It will hibernate the system for however long you tell it to. And this is where you can set any parameters that were in the LS settings here. And finally, there's this RX set, and that allows you to actually set uh, bandwidth, spread factor, and coding rate all in one fell swoop. All of these help commands allow you to talk directly to the gateway, but, 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 there is one command, this send command, allows you to actually talk to the trackers. And what it does is it broadcasts whatever message you want out into the ether, and if it's picked up by one of the trackers, the tracker can act on that, which is, pff, I don't know. I think it's huge. Opens up a whole lot of other possibilities. Let's have a little chat with one of these trackers. I'll just turn one on here. And the first thing it's gonna do is it's gonna dump itself into a fail-safe mode, which is just a known set of bandwidth, spread factor, and coding rate settings that you can use to communicate with it should it be uh, unable to communicate under other circumstances. The reason for that is it's possible to actually change those parameters on the fly in these trackers. So you may run across a situation where you lose communication, but by resetting it, by powering it on and off, you have an opportunity to reset those parameters. So that's why that's there. Obviously, I've had that problem, which is why it exists. Okay, so once it's out of fail-safe mode, it will report what its current parameters are and in this case it's 125 megahertz 12 spread factor 5 coding rate and this 10 here tells you that it's going to report a gps coordinate every 10 seconds and it is actually possible to change that so we're going to do that here we're going to go send t05 which is the designation of the tracker and we're going to go delay we're going to set that to let's say 12. so we know the message has been broadcast it's been picked up by the tracker and the tracker responds by saying, yep, okay, we set the new delay. It's now 12 seconds. That configuration is actually changed in the software. So um, the next time it reboots, it will come up with that 12 second delay. So those, that's a kind of a permanent change until you change it. And you can do the same thing for bandwidth spread factor and coding rate. In this case, we would go send T05 and then set RX. Oh, uh, well, damn you, signal lost. You would go, it's gonna, okay, 
it, that didn't work, obviously. <laughs> we'll go send T05 set RX. Uh, what are we going to do? 12500 colon, let's say 10 colon 5. So we're going to change spread factor from 12 to 10. Now, the thing is, the gateway will not be able to talk to this. Oh, and I realize I just made a mistake. We need another zero there, 10 colon 5. The gateway is not going to be able to talk at this spread factor. So you have to change it in the gateway as well. So we're going to do that right away afterwards. So send that. Oh, and I also spelt it wrong. So let's try this. Send T05RX set one two five zero 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 colon ten colon five. Okay. Please work. Okay, thank you. So the message has said the gateway has said, okay, fine, new values are saved. And now we can't talk to it anymore because we are on the wrong, we're on the wrong spread factor. So we're going to go uh, set uh, Laura SF10. Okay, great. So that's been set now. We should be able to communicate with the tracker again. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go send T05 and then report. We're going to tell it to like respond to us. And there you go. You can see that it's changed uh, the 12 to a 10. So that's, those are the new settings for this in both the gateway and the tracker. And uh, so, yeah, pretty cool. I think the only other thing that I've implemented in the tracker uh, is a sleep command, which will kind of hibernate it for a period of time. And the reason that was necessary was because uh, there were some people that were leaving trackers on, so they would just spit out GPS data like say every 15 seconds and it would prevent the gateway from sleeping and the battery would run down it wasn't a good situation so I needed a way of like shutting those things up and that's how I did it and that's pretty much it for the software side it's uh it's in its infancy but there's tons of possibilities here so there you have it you're all caught up with what's been happening with the Laura dog tracker project except this i made this while you weren't looking uh it's one of the the mobile gateway but the portable handheld version it's exactly the same the stuff that's in here except it's all shrunk down and it's got a you know a shitty antenna but other than that works fine so i don't know when the next time i'm going to make another one of these uh, laura dog tracker videos but i can guarantee you there will be another one at some point i am not nearly done with this project uh, there's still way too many things to explore so uh, look out for part what? I think it's part four, isn't it? Yeah, of this and sometime in the future. Anyway, that's all I got for you. So thanks for watching. Cheers.